So welcome everybody to this uh, Jenkins User Conference Paris. Um, I'm very proud to be here today. That's the second conference uh, we have uh, on, on, on that topic. Uh, the first one was in San Francisco back in, uh, in October, I think, last year, so about six months ago. Um, and as you can see, um, a number of, of follow-up conferences are on the agenda for this year. So uh, we've moved from uh, one to six, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a pretty nice jump. Uh, so the first one is, 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 is right now in Paris. Uh, in about a month, uh, we're gonna have one in New York. Um, then we're gonna have one in, uh, in Israel in July. So uh, summer in, in Israel can't be that bad. Um, Tokyo in July, San Francisco in September again, collocated with, well, about at about the same time as Java One. And then uh, in Antwerp uh, in, in November, um, and uh, uh, any month is good for Antwerp because they have good beers. Uh, so it's going to be collocated with, uh, with, with DevOps, obviously. So, um, so, so if you want to, uh, I just make some advertisement for, for those conferences. If you have topics you want to talk about, um, if you, if you know, the, 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 the call for papers uh, is, is open for, uh, for those conferences, for most of those. Uh, if you want to sponsor, it's also possible. So uh, it's, a, it's a great way to interact with, uh, with, uh, with developers and, and, and QA around the, the globe. Um, I'd like to also thank our, our uh, sponsor uh, for, for, this, uh, for this conference. Um, we have CloudBees. Um, as a platinum sponsor, we have JFrog, uh, a gold sponsor, and, and Zenica as a silver sponsor. Uh, it's, it's very important for, uh, for those Jenkins user conference to have the, the support from the sponsors. So thanks a lot. And it's, it's not just about, you know, helping uh, 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 Jenkins during those conference. Uh, those sponsors are also uh, big sponsors of, of Jenkins across the board. Uh, they use it on a daily basis. So uh, I'm very proud to, to have the, uh, those companies as a sponsor of the Jenkins conference. So. If we can make a lot of noise, that's even better. So uh, please tweet. We have a special tag called Jenkins Conf. So don't forget to put it as part of your tag. You can also follow uh, uh, that tag. Um, I actually just received a, 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 a tweet now. Uh, so it seems to be uh, starting. Um, so, uh, so please tweet, make noise. That can only help the future uh, Jenkins uh, uh, conference. If you also have some blogs that you're going to write on, on this conference, make sure to add that tag. We're going to retweet those and, 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 and generate even uh, more, uh, more traction. On, on Jenkins still, um, there is a, a newsletter that CloudBees is promoting called Continuous Information. Uh, we just had the second release of that newsletter uh, a, few, uh, a few weeks back. Um, so uh, if you want to register, that's pretty easy. Just go on the CloudBees website. Uh, you should find your way. Um, it, it contains a lot of information about uh, community activities, new plugins being released, uh, new release of Jenkins Core, and so on. So it's a, it's a, it's a, very, uh, it's a very good newsletter. Um, who didn't dream to be a, a video star, especially in Paris, right? So uh, if you want to be one this week, you can do so. Just sign a, a form uh, at the entrance. We're looking for people for a short video, very short commentary. It's going to be uh, uh, then on, on the website, listing all of the people, you know, replying to some easy questions about how you use Jenkins and such. Uh, no need to be a, a, a well-known artist to do so. So that's that's the first good thing. Um, so uh, that's uh, and, and you can prove your uh, your wife or your husband that you were indeed working uh, when you travel to Paris, which is uh, always uh, pretty easy. Um, also, since we're going to have six conferences this year, uh, there are a bunch of t-shirts and, and, and other goodies that will be uh, available for each of those Jenkins user conference. So if you want to collect them, who knows, maybe uh, in a few years there are going to be collectors. Uh, just ask uh, Alisa, Heidi, uh, or Andre at the, at the information desk. Uh, they'll tell you more about that. Just a few notes in terms of logistics. Um, this room is uh, Louis Armstrong uh, and Ella Fitzgerald room. They, they, they took a small, uh, a small name. Uh, so it's not two rooms. Louis Armstrong and Ella Fitzgerald is, is one thing. Um, and uh, the other room in front is uh, Miles Davis room. 
So um, we're going to have Kosuke's presentation in this room, and at 10.30, we're going to split room. So this room here is going to become track one, and the other one is going to become track two. Uh, we're going to serve lunch at around noon, noon uh, 12.10. Um, and um, at the end of the day, we're going to have a, a panel, but it's going to be on the other side, so in the Miles Davis room. So thanks a lot. Um, just one last word. We're going to have some, uh, 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 some, some, some good news uh, for today, so some, some announcement will be made. Uh, I was told that the five question marks are indeed uh, meaningful, uh, not the fact that they're question marks, that we have five actually, so uh, we'll see. Now, um, I'd like to uh, introduce somebody who doesn't need to be introduced to this audience, but still, I'm going to do it. Uh, I'd like to welcome Kosuke Kawaguchi. So, yeah, um, so, well, thank you very much for coming today. Um, it's always good to see people using it, and I see a number of uh, fellow plugin developers in the audience, that some of them I've never met before. Um, so we had a pleasure of having more than 20 talk submissions for this conference, and it's always difficult to, you know, to choose the talks that we have to accept. And thanks for everyone in the attendee for coming today um, for, for this event. And like Sasha said, I also wanted to extend my thank you to the sponsors. Um, they are big fans of Jenkins and uh, they help us spread the word. That's a huge. And finally, I also wanted to thank the staff that made this event like this possible. You know, I've been involved in organizing something like this a couple of times. So I know how hard it is to, you know, to, to, to provide the spaces and then make sure that everything is in the order. So, you know, thanks for people standing behind there that made this event possible. So thank you very much. So um, the, in terms of thanking the attendees, so we were running this referral program where, you know, we asked you to invite your friends to this event. And then I believe the lucky winner of the uh, five, uh, the Angry Wars, it's in here. <laughs> yes, uh, to the Nicola Bucket. Well, so maybe, yeah, why don't you just come up and uh, I can give it to them, right? Sure. Yeah. So. Yes, I hope. I actually don't know if this is as big as in here as in the U.S., but Thank I you hope. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. For the photo. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> All right. So yeah. So that's that. So um, yeah. With that out of the way, I was looking at this. I guess the banner outside this conference room this morning, and I couldn't help but think that you came a long way. Um, because this whole project started in the summer of 2004 when I was working on something else entirely in my day job. And one day I just broke one too many bills. So I thought, you know, it'd be nice if the program would catch that kind of embarrassment before my colleagues do. Because I've been known as a guy who breaks bills, and that's not a good name to be known by. So initially, it was just a couple of shell scripts combined with the cron and so on. So it was pretty easy things. But uh, from there, it kind of kept on going. Um, the, so the, because I worked in this part of Java group that was doing Java EE, I felt like I actually need to write some application on top of Java EE, right? You got to eat your own dog food. So you know, initially, that was how it looked like. The guy who I ripped off the UI from didn't like me copying the UI. So I, you know, in the, by 2006, I had to change the UI and it kind of starts to look like what it is today, except it starts with H, not J, right? Um, but I think this relatively early on, this culture in the project was, was established pretty well. So we got this release, the, I mean, the uh, weekly release cycles going. This is, I guess, uh, the stars contrast to my day job, which was only releasing like a once a year. And we had this great extensibility mechanism built inside the platform, which really made it possible for people around the world to contribute and have fun with. And then that extensibility mechanism now allows us to have a very low barrier to the entry to the project. So now you know, in, it, it is a standing rule in the Jenkins project that everyone can become a committer just by asking. And then that's only possible because everyone gets to have their own sandbox and then so that I don't have to see any of those code. Right? So that's how it works well. And we also committed firmly on the backward compatibility. So today, 
people who, who I mean, the people who have been running Jenkins, let's say 1.200, which is like more than three years ago, you can still upgrade to the current version of Jenkins without losing your data. So that's something pretty significant for us, and I think it's a good, good thing. Um, and then so we just kept on going and going from there. And you know, so one of the way to look at the growth of the project is to look at the total number of unique plugins. Um, so today we have, I counted like a week, I mean the, the weekend before I came here, and then that was 535. And I'm sure by now it's a little more than that. Uh, we, see, we see new releases all the time. And you know, so it's not only growing, obviously, but the pace of growth is also going up, which is really nice. So the, um, the users using Jenkins is also becoming more and more active. Again, this, so this is tracking the number of tickets. And again, it's obviously growing because we got so many bugs that needs to be fixed and all. But um, the pace of growth is also going up. So uh, in the uh, so it's, go it's going pretty well. And I, you know, when I was doing this, I couldn't help but, uh, but contrast this with the brother that I just separated like a year ago that started with Edge. So I put that number over there, and then you can clearly see that, that we've kind of left them behind pretty well. Um, and so those, I guess the ticket activity is a kind of indication for the user activity, user options. So, you know, I think at one point we said, well, let's try to collect some names that's using Jenkins. And then so these are the company who raised their hands and said, you know, we are using Jenkins. So I'm very proud of that. And beyond these, I guess, well-known names, um, it had the mechanism where we allow people to submit their anonymous usages. So we are tracking, uh, well, actually, the, the guy in the Switzerland is tracking this and plotting it in numbers. So aside from this one drop where we had to, I guess, to be separated by the brother, um, it quickly came back to where it should be. And then now I'm very happy to report that in the last month we went beyond the uh, 40,000 mark. So that's a pretty large number of installations, especially given that each one of them is a server representing a lot of users. Um, so the another way to look at the options is like the, you know, the where the users are, and you kind of expect, as you would expect, it's so that they are coming all over the places. And then certainly the Europe is a very, you know, very big stronghold of the Jenkins users. So uh, just as Sasha said, that's why we are taking the uh, Jenkins is a conference around the world. It's a bit crazy if you ask me, but um, well, at least I get to see all parts of the world, so I'm quite excited to do that. Um, and then, so it's really amazing to think that the, all of this happened within just a year um, since we became known as the Jenkins. So I wanted to, I guess, look at some of the things that we've done last year, I guess, in the past year, I'm sorry. So the, one of the things, I guess, the fallout of the split was that we are now affiliated with this nonprofit organization called Software in the Public Interest. So this is the organization that helps promote the open source and free software development. And, and you'll find the likes of the Debian, Drupal, or the PostgreSQL is, is a part of this you know, affiliated project. So by, by being affiliated with SBI, it allows projects like us to enter into contracts, like having the contributor license agreement with the core developers. We can also own assets like servers, domain names, or the trademarks, things like that. And, and um, beyond all, it allows the project to survive beyond any single individual. So if my plane go back, going back to the United States is gonna crash into the Atlantic Ocean, the project could still survive, and I'm very happy with that. And then, so one of the things that we've done um, by after having this affiliation with the ent legal entity is, the, uh, is to do the fundraising drive. So around the last summer, um, people downloaded Jenkins and plugins left and right. And then, so we had a rather significant bandwidth overage of about 5,000 bucks that we needed to raise. So we, you know, we through the SPI, we, we did the donation drive and we are very happy to be able to raise more than at $12,000, far, far beyond what we originally anticipated. So I had to pause like Jimmy Wales saying that, you know, you have to donate. Because you know, like it's a big video that this kind of fundraising drive, right? So you had to copy it, but it really worked well. So um, one of the things that we started by taking advantage of that extra, I guess, money is this Jenkins CIA program. The CIA stands for the CIA ambassador not be a central intelligence agency, but you'll obviously see the connotation here. So the idea here 
is that we are trying to help people promote, spread the words of Jenkins and promote Jenkins. So if you're thinking about going to a local meetup or um, the Java user group of some kind and then present about Jenkins, if you can tell us up front, we'll send you the nice t-shirts that has the Jenkins CIA logo on it. And we will give you a sticker so that you can hand them out to your, your, um, your attendees. And then we'll ask you to do a guest post on the Jenkins CI blog. And then we'll push the pin down on the world map saying this city is Concord. So if you're interested in being a CI agent, please let me know. Um, we got the funding to drive this, actually. So back to the, uh, the governance stuff. So um, we also appointed the interim governance board of three people between me and Andrew and Dean, who's both of them has been a long time contributor to the core. Um, so, and then that's recognized as the ultimate, I guess, the decision making point from the SPI. But I guess in the spirit of open source, you know, the, having these three people board isn't particularly open. So the, the actual decision making happens in this project meeting that's held online on IRC channel. So we have this bi-weekly and people could uh, participate in the, you know, this, put the agenda up there that for things that they'd like us to be discussing, and you can also see the log files online. So I believe there's a number of uh, regular participants from Europe, because it's standing around the evening time in Europe, um, I guess like 8, 7 p.m.-ish time. So if you are interested in, I guess, you know, having your uh, beef discussed, uh, please come and uh, we'd be happy to talk about those things. Um, the other thing we've done is to, uh, to write down this, I guess I, I talked earlier a little bit about the culture of the Jenkins project and how it's being established early on. So one of the things we did was to actually write that down into the concrete document. So if you carefully look at the right side of the screen, you'll see like a tiny, tiny font. And then that's the, uh, the document where we dis that discusses the exact modus operandi, except you know, it was implicit so for people who've been involved in Jenkins project for a long time, they kind of know it already, but for people new to the project, it wasn't so obvious. But now with this document, hopefully it is. So it discusses things like, you know, the license policies that, you, that what kind of licenses you could take, you know, how we expect the developers to behave, and then, you know, that, the fact that we are giving everyone the commit access and things like that. Um, and the trademark usage, you know, what kind of things we'd like people to be doing before submitting pull requests and so on and so forth. So it kind of helps you clarify how this project is working. Um, on another front, we started collecting a contributor license agreement from core developers. So these are, um, I guess this is a document that clarifies this set of rights that associated with contribution that's going into the core. And it's basically just the same text adopted by Apache and we ask the developers that look before you commit your code, please make sure that you know the code that you're committing is actually yours and not someone else's code. So it helps us clarify uh, those legal situations a little bit better. Um, so the another front we are, we made a lot of work on is this infrastructures and releases. Um, so today we rely on these pretty diverse entities to run the key infrastructure services for the Jenkins project. So we have the servers hosted on the Oregon State <coughs> University Open Source Lab. We have the free bandwidth provided by Contigix. The JFrog provides us the repositories. The CloudBees provides the part of the hosted CI servers and so on and so forth. So I really wanted to thank you for these companies for gen their general support. Um, it's been quite helpful. Um, the, uh, another thing we've done on the release front is this long-term support releases, or the LTS for short. So this started around, I think, this time last year. Um, and then the idea being that, well, the main nine releases of Jenkins is a train model, meaning like every Monday, almost every Monday, the new releases goes out. Um, but you know, the, the problem was that sometimes it's not obvious for what releases people want to upgrade because we certainly don't expect everyone to be upgrading every week. So, um, so we started this effort where we pick a good mainline releases and then branch off a sustaining tail from there. And then we only put back the fixes that's known to be okay or the critical security fixes and then maintain that for a couple of months. So the, the first version we've done was be based on 1.49, and then we jumped up to 1.424. We had about 60 releases in that line, 
And just the end of last month, we released the debumped that to 1.4471. And so the Red Hat has been very helpful in actually making this work. They have the extensive test matrix and so on. And we, I guess, you know, we, as a developer, and as a, I guess a, as a project developers, we kind of figured out how this thing is works. So it kind of established itself into the way project works. Um, and it's going well. Um, we also formal started this posting security advisories more formally. So the Jenkins being a web app, and it, it's basically about forking processes. So it's, um, it's, it's not immune to the kind of vulnerabilities that affect the web applications in general. So we try to fix them as quickly as they come. And so, um, but you know, when we, when we push the release, because it's open source, uh, people could actually, the, well, the people could actually analyze the fix that we are making to guess the mode of attack. So what we'd like to ask the users is to subscribe to the security advisories, either through email or the RSS feed. You can go to the Jenkins CI.org advisories to get that. And this is obviously more uh, important for people who are running Jenkins on the public internet because they have a bigger attack surface. But even if you're running Jenkins on inside your company's intranet, right, this is still something you want to follow because there are more of attacks that people can mount from outside uh, the, outside the uh, network. Um, the, um, the another, so going back to the release, another area we made a progress is to I guess, make, make Jenkins available on even bigger, I guess, the platform slash uh, distribution. So, James Page from Canonical uh, took the effort of taking Jenkins and then make it a part of the uh, official Ubuntu distributions. Uh, so this is actually a tremendous achievement because the Debian has a very strong policy about how their packages need to be made. And in particular, this meant that the, he had to package 80 odd dependency libraries of Jenkins all into separate packages. So this isn't, just, this isn't just packaging one, but it's actually more like 89, 80s-ish packages. So um, it's pa perhaps it's because the Canonical is also a big user of Jenkins, so maybe they saw the body in it, but I was quite grateful uh, that he was, he done this. So nowadays, if you just do apt get install Jenkins on Debian, you'll get the latest LTS releases right away. And, um, the, so aside from that Debian releases, the people from different, um, I guess the community people that I put their faces on had, had packages Jenkins up to different environments. So the one of the big front was the Mac OS packaging, because I, you know, I didn't know much about the Mac OS, so there was no packages available there. But some companies use Mac for so big time, so they spend a lot of effort into it. And we also expanded our reach to the various BSD distributions and Solaris and then Gen2 and so on. So it's available on more platforms than ever than before. Now on the infrastructure side, the interesting thing that has happened is that, um, is that the, you know, so even though the Jenkins product has pride itself in lowering the barrier to the entry, the administration of the server was one thing that we couldn't quite give access to because much of those requires the root access and I can't just give you the root access to our servers to random people. So uh, for the longest time, it's been difficult to recruit new contributors to help in the servers, uh, but the Tyler started introducing Puppet into managing servers and essentially turned the server configurations into a set of source files that's version controlled. So now people can suggest the changes that we need to make to the, our infrastructure, like running a new services through the pull, by submitting pull requests. So in this way, uh, we kind of, uh, you know, we were able to open up the uh, infrastructure or services to more people, and I really like that. Um, and he also made an improvement by in the monitoring space. So we had a number of issues where like, you know, the disk filling up and then killing the services and so on. So now the whole thing is under Nagios and uh, it's also hooked up to the PagerDuty. I don't know if you guys use PagerDuty here, but um, it, it, basically what it does is when the server goes down or one of the critical metrics turns red, uh, I or someone gets the, uh, the pager notification. So I had a number of incidents where you know, I was about to go to sleep, like at 11 p.m., and then I got the paging that says, look, the server is down, and I got to work on it. So, 
you know, we have to suffer a little bit, but those things will you know, help you uh, see the services up and running a longer time. And we expanded the number of mirrors to nine from to around the world, and we run, now run our own DNS, and then this is also managed by puppets, so people can send in the pull request to add new domain name entries and new services. And we also outsourcing some of the hosting work that used to be done by ourselves to the external companies. So we used to run our own Maven repository, but we are now pushing that to Artifactory that's hosted by JFrog. We are running our own CI server, obviously, that, you know, but some of this work is also delegated into the CloudBeast hosted Jenkins. So, um, so these are the kind of things that we've been doing uh, inside the developer, but the, unfortunately, these aren't necessarily things that are immediately visible to the users. Right? So I wanted to switch your gear a little bit and talk about things that you'd actually see. Um, so uh, let's see here. I need to see if I could speak and hold the mouse at the same time. So, um, so one of the things that the project has spent a lot of effort on uh, recently is to improve the UI. And we got a lot of good feedback, so I wanted to show some of those. Um, well, actually, before that, um, so the first thing I wanted to show was actually to be able to install new plugins without restart. Um, so now, I think this was you know, a few months ago that we added the capability for you to install a new version of plugins without, uh, without uh, restarting the server. So now, you know, uh, you can just check the plugins and um, install without restart. And then what it does is, you know, you'll see the same upgrade screen, but you don't need to restart the Jenkins to start using this new plugin. So I just installed the XPNC plugin, and then if I go to, um, to the configuration page, you'll see that the XPNC is um, available right there. Uh, yeah, here. So now it makes it a lot easier to try new plugins. And the other area we made a lot of progress is the UI, like I said, and you can already see some of it here. For example, this, there is this save button and the apply button that sticks at the bottom of the page, so you don't have to constantly scroll all the way down to be able to click these things. You know, as you know, in a large project, you see a pretty large, uh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, and then the other thing is really like is apply button, because you know, you often get into the cycle of, <laughs> Yeah, so you often get into this cycle of, well, tweak the configuration, do the build, and then modify it, and repeat, and rinse the whole process. So now you don't have to leave the page, and you just be able to apply that change, and then you can keep on building in the next tab. Um, and then speaking of the configuration page, the other thing that we added is that, you know, in a large configuration page, you can jump to different sections very easily. And then this breadcrumb also sticks to the top of the page. So again, in a large configuration page, this helps you jump right to the place that you want it to go without scoring it. Uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Man, this is a tough audience. But um, the, um, yes, so the, you know, and then I mentioned about this going from the console output to the configuration page, because you know, about the half the time when the build fail, let's face it, it's just like the configuration problem, right? So. When you're looking at the console output and, and say if you, know, you discover that you needed to change some configuration, you could just hover over your mouse and then you could click the configure to jump right to the configuration page. So again, a lot of gimmicks to help you, uh, help you save the number of clicking you have to do. And similar context menu is available on mo in most of the places. Now, you know, okay, so I said most of the places, but because some of these things can come from plugins and we, aren't, we haven't quite made the, the whole sweep of the whole thing. So if you notice some places where we aren't taking advantage of these new UI improvements, you know, we'd like you to tell me. So that's, um, and then we got a few more things that we wanted to do in the uh, UI improvement space. So you know, please expect more to come. And I hope you like some of those changes. Now, Aside from what meets the eyes that I could demo, there are more things that's been done behind the scene to enable these things. So one of the things that Otake, the guy from I think Tokyo was pushing on, was to modernize the uh, JavaScript libraries that we had used inside Jenkins. And this is actually trickier than we thought because these people writing these JavaScript libraries, they don't care whatsoever about the backward compatibility. You know? They can remove the method left and right, and we have to fix those. 
So, but uh, we thanks to those various efforts, we were able to upgrade that to the latest version of relevant libraries. And that in turn allows us to improve the uh, page loading and JavaScript performance, especially noticeable in the configuration page because that's you know, where we do the most of the JavaScript related things. Um, and then also we made an improvement to the general page loading performance. So now the ggzip compression is on for most of the HTML pages. And then this is especially noticeable for large latency networks. So let's say if you're accessing the Jenkins server in the US from Europe, then the packet run trip is costing like hundreds of milliseconds. So you'll see a noticeable improvement order of seconds, especially on large pages like configuration page. We also make sure that the caching is working correctly, especially when things are coming from plugins. Um, so that also help contribute you to quickly get to you know, the information that you need. And that's just the front end UI related things. And there's a lot more things going on in the back end. Right, so we got the localization now in the 4D languages, including Arabic and Hebrew and what have you. I'm really looking forward to see some Klingon translations. So if you know someone that who speaks that language, please let me know. Um, we also have a client-less CLI. So you know, the Jenkins has a CLI interface, but normally it requires a custom Java client. And then we open this up to the, uh, with a generic SSH client, so you don't really have to have Java on the uh, client side to be able to interface with Jenkins server. On the CLI, we also added the SSH public key authentication. So you can you know, securely uh, talk to your Jenkins server for doing more automations. On the REST API, we supported API tokens, so again, without getting worried about the actual back end or exposing the real password, you could talk to the Jenkins server. The CLI has more improvements. Um, on another front, it, this might not be, uh, the, one of the nifty improvements is that the, we now have a mechanism to do a naming convention enforcement to the job. In large organization, people often have some conventions about the job names, like they have to include their organization prefix and so on. So now you could enforce those things. You can now use the, and the escape sequences inside the con console output, so especially for Ruby development and so on, where people take advantage of those things. It's really nice. And then the Maven project have been, you know, because long been complained that it's only capable of doing Maven. Now we can add arbitrary build step before and after the execution of the Maven making it a bit more flexible. So lots of development going on inside things like that that you could, you could see. Um, but beyond that, what the, the real role of the core is actually to enable interesting plugins to be developed. You know, the core itself doesn't really have to, have to provide the tangible features on its own, but it, it needs to, rather it needs to enable that. So on that front, one of the interesting work is that we are, you know, the, the uh, Charles is enabling the development of plugins entirely in Ruby without using Java. So in this work, someone who only knows Ruby, who doesn't know anything about Java or Maven or anything, would be able to write plugins and then produce the same .jpi or the HPI packages that rest of us could use without knowing that this plugin is written in Ruby. So um, Ruby being a dynamic language is, you know, this mechanism has a decent development environment support and people can reload the code without the restarting the services. Uh, you can generate the skeleton. There's a support for releasing and packaging and debugging and so on. And we are seeing already like, a, I think three or four plugins developed by people who weren't originally involved in this effort. So it's really ramping up nicely. And we hope to, I guess, uh, bring in more Ruby developers in this way. Um, or for more traditional Java plugins, we've done the uh, integration of Juice as a inversion of control container inside core so that you don't have to rely on the singleton injection, but you could actually just wire things up more nicely. Uh, the test harness is improved to use JUnit 4. Um, and then you can use Groovy View instead of Jelly, which is uh, st st still something that I take a lot of luck at. And if it's a Groovy as in view, you can you know, run, this, run this in the debugger and you get the nice code completion for editing uh, the HTML templates. Um, Andrew has uh, enabled the development of, of plugins through Gradle, not from Maven. And so you could package the uh, Jenkins plugin that way. And it's got a mi nice mini DSL to simplify. And then there is now a JRevel integration. So 
if you have J-Rebel and then developing plugins, you can do a lot more with that restarting the service. So, um, so that's the kind of things that we've done in the last year in various places to improve the core functionalities. But you know, I also wanted to talk a little bit about the, what we've been working on. So I'm actually not entirely sure if I'm supposed to be talking about this, but nonetheless, I was, so this is something I was working on last week that I was so excited that I couldn't uh, help but show it to you. But um, so this is uh, the, uh, one of my, I guess, days of work from Cloud Peace. And then so we wanted to, you know, we look at Travis and we like, really like that it was making it very easy for people to um, start a new CI job on their GitHub repositories. So we, we, uh, we had this private beta services, so don't quite uh, tweet this in public yet, but um, you know, I'd love to get your feedback on this feature because I'm pretty excited about that. So what this does is um, it lets you set up the, um, the build jobs on your Jenkins, I'm sorry, the build jobs on your GitHub repositories very easily. So I'll click the uh, login, login with GitHub to uh, start the authentication process and if the network would respond, it should be able to uh, be, I should, I should be logging in any minute now. All right, is my network still alive? Um, no, I think it's still in the same page. So it's a Google app. No. Well, let's see. Yeah, this isn't, this isn't looking good. Um, what should I do? Let me try to reconnect once. Are other people getting in the network all right? Is it just me? Oh, well. <laughs> Man, talk about the demo moment. Oh, I think it's not, yes. Yes, okay, good. All right, phew. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so, okay. So what I wanted to show was, I, I, you know, all I do is I click the login with GitHub and then it recognizes me. So now what this allows me to do is I can click the create project and instantly set up the uh, CI jobs for my Jenkins, I mean, sorry, my GitHub repository. So I wanted to, um, you know, I got this filtering and going on. So let's say I wanted to create a CI job for this end project, right? So I just click this button and then that gets the job created. And then, so it actually sniffs the content of the repositories and set up the default build. So this one is uh, ant build, so it automatically picks up the ant executions. And then you, you see that the build has already started and completed. It actually doesn't have any you know, substantial work in it, but as you can see, it has built all right. And then so if I have some local changes, Yeah, and then if I push the changes up there, then it will, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> this delay scares me. Um, but yeah, so if I got the, um, uh, the change pushed up, then it will automatically get built, but it doesn't stop there. Um, so what's really awesome about this is that now if I create a pull request, it automatically tests your pull request against the tip of the master and then update the comment.
so let's say I'm working on some kick-ass changes, and then what I'm going to do is to push this up into um, uh, what was the branch name? JUC to the upstream, okay? So, I mean to the Git repositories, and then now I'm switched to switching to the GitHub UI, and I'll create a yeah a pull request. So I have to update the commit from. So now, I guess now I'm pretending that I'm someone else that's interested in this project that's making changes here. So I, so please take this change. And then submit a pull request. Well, if you can, if you want to submit the pull request from there, go ahead and try it. It should work. Um, and then this will get built. Um, and test it at the same time. Well, it's not kicking me out. Am I in the wrong place? No. Hmm. No, I I think I'm on the right place though. Um, am I on the wrong project? Hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah, okay, so it was just a delay, I guess. Now here, it, I think here it comes. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, it, no, I'm not sure. This isn't it, though. Mm. Well, 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 okay. Let me, let me just quickly check a few things. Right. I think it's set up correctly. So maybe I just need to wait a bit more. All right, so I'll come back later on this. Um, but yeah, so the idea is, well, so you know, the, if pull request has been already tested with your test, unit test and build, you'd be a lot more comfortable clicking the integrate, I mean, the merge button. So I thought this is a great feature that I could use myself in the Jenkins project. Um, so like I said, um, it's not publicly launched yet, but I'd love to get your feedback on this. So um, give us, give it a try and let us know how it goes. Now on my, from uh, my other day job front, um, I've been working on this Jenkins Enterprise by CloudBeast that's going to be due to this in May. Uh, we've added the high availability features, um, the ability to host your own update center, and do the validated merge, which is kind of like a pull request testing, uh, but you can use it with your own Git, rep Git repositories, not necessarily on GitHub. And today we also announced that we have the, uh, we are giving away a number of interesting plugins for free. So you have this folder plugin that allows you to organize your jobs into folders. And um, if you create a CloudBees account, I believe you can download it for free and then use it. Um, and then the same goes to the backup to cloud plugins, which where we provide the backup storage, I believe, for free. Um, and we are also open sourcing a number of plugins. The one is the credential plugin that creates a infrastructure for managing the credentials for various plugins. We also have a file leak detector that helps you troubleshoot the tricky, too many open file setters. And we, this tool can track down exactly where the files are open. So that was on the, I guess, from my day job front. But we also, in the project, we are also making some other improvements. Um, so I wanted to show some of what's in the works. Um, so the, I mentioned that the UI improvement has been deep in the uh, Jenkins. So um, we. I guess that the development team got really excited about the positive feedback it got. And so someone took it one step further and then he, he thought it'd be nice to integrate the, um, the Twitter bootstrap into the, uh, the Jenkins primary UI. So this is still a work in progress, but um, you will see uh, the, um, a lot nicer forms and so on that has, let's say, um, the, the growing backgrounds and then the colored buttons and so on. So for example, if you have, so one of the things, 
so the, the people who are working on this really wanted to, I guess, do things that they haven't done before. So now, for example, you can hide the advanced section, not only open it, but you could also hide it back. And uh, if you also add something, you can delete this fragment relatively easily. And then it will also tell you which portion it's deleting. So, you know, as you nested where these added, ad, where these add buttons are nested, it wasn't often, often obvious which portion the delete button is applied to, but this makes it a little easier to find those things. So um, this is still a work in progress, but we hope to be able to integrate this change soon. And um, so that's one of the things that we are doing. And beyond that, you know, I'd really like to work on, the, I guess, the startup performance improvement. Um, this has been like, this has been a known issue for more than four years or so, that uh, it's been you know, on the back of my mind forever, but I never got around doing it, so I think the time is ripe that we actually do it. Um, and then, you know, beyond, and then aside from that, I think we are coming to this age where we need, really need to take advantage of lots and lots of computers. So in that front, we wanted to do a number of work, like providing the easier means for you to do the parallelization of the test executions, uh, help you distribute your workload into multiple servers more easily by taking advantage of slaves that Jenkins has and then allow you to use it for purposes other than just running builds. Um, so that's the kind of thing uh, that we are trying to um, work on. Oh, actually, I wanted to see, I guess, if, well, yeah. Uh, so that's the kind of things that, that we are working on. Um, so we are working on, I guess, the infrastructure level of the project both this, you know, the servers, the monitoring stuff, or as well the governance. Adoption is going very strong, you know, again, in the both the users in terms of the number of plugins. And then there's a lot of very interesting developments in the core. I didn't talk anything about the lot of interesting developments that's happening in the plugin space, which is where most of the features are delivered. But hopefully you'll hear a lot about that today because I, I believe number of plugin developers are showing off their plugins today. Um, and then we are working on uh, this, you know, we continue to work on these changes. So um, I, I, hope, uh, I hope you like what we are working on. And if, you're not, if not, please let us know where we need to make progress on. So with that, I really hope you enjoy the rest of the day. And please talk to each other because, you know, there's, I guess in many ways, this, the build automation is a very, uh, the, the process, lonely process, that you don't really have that many enthusiasts of these kind of things inside the same organization. So this is a rare opportunity that look, everyone is automation geek. So that's, a, that's an unusual opportunity. So, and then people often share the same kind of issues. And so I hope you have a chance to talk to your fellow colleagues and then to, to share interesting tidbits between you guys. So with that, I wanted to, um, I wanted to end my part. And so thank you very much.